Stars, and I'm here with Amit Agrawal of Gripla Technologies. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Arun. So, Gripla, you guys work with HR Tech, right? Mm -hmm. What exactly is that? Sure. So, so, so basically, uh, Gripla is a HR Tech platform mm -hmm. where we build a technology product mm -hmm. for the senior tech hiring, okay. primarily to deal with all the uh, the management related positions, which are typically around seven years plus mm -hmm. uh, for the tech companies. Uh, mostly startups uh, and whether at least the startups or the well-funded ones. Okay, so you're, you're, you're helping startups or you know not, not just necessarily early stage, but all startups yes. fill up the management positions. Yes, yes. But why why do they need you? Why can't they just hire an internal HR and get going? Sure. So I think uh, to answer this, uh, to bring a little bit context into this, I have been into the engineering leadership role for the last uh, at least ten years. Okay, and. Uh, in, in these roles, one of the key responsibilities which I had apart from uh, filling into the technology part mm -hmm. was also to build the leadership team. And uh, I experienced it myself, uh, you know, as the first uh, sort of victim okay. that it's it's uh, kind of very difficult. It's it's a very challenging thing to hire the tech folks, the mm -hmm. senior tech folks. And that's the, you know, that was a thought which I started with. But why, why is that a challenge? I mean, sure, if you have a good company, wouldn't people want to join you? Sure. I think... Uh, it's it was a little confusing in the sense that you know you see a lot of people who are already providing a lot of talent pool there is a good set of companies which are working on this you see companies which uh, with a lot of uh, very strong internal recruitment teams and all but i think uh, this is still one area where you have a lot of human intelligence where right. you, you suddenly see hiring more as a art mm -hmm. than a science right okay. where people have their own uh, preferences and biases and all those things and there are requirements which are being sent from the hiring managers to the recruitment team to the external agencies information is getting less uh, lost uh, somewhere and then you realize that you know what you're getting is not exactly what you need so what do you mean so beyond the okay i need this person to do xyz Mm -hmm. functions in the office. What do you mean? What else are the other things people look for in a management position? See, management position is very, very tricky for any organization and especially if you see in the startup world, management is going to determine a big uh, part of, you know, how successful the startup is going to be because right. they're not just going to do the work, they are also going to set the direction, they are also going to set the culture oh, okay. part of it. So in a small right. company, you need the right people. To so you need the right people and only the right people can get and build the right team as well, mm -hmm. right? So there are a lot of things which goes behind, uh, you know, getting the right person on board. It's not clearly mentioned in the JDs, the mm -hmm. job descriptions which usually float around, right? There are a lot of hidden meanings to that. Mm -hmm. Just to give you an example, for 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 example, uh, stability, okay. right? So stability in a company is not something which you will see in most of the job requirements, right? But there are companies oh. who prefer. Uh, certain managers to be stable in their jobs mm -hmm. whereas there are some other companies where it's okay if they have changed jobs too frequently because they have good reasons okay. and they will not hire it right now there is nothing wrong with these two set of people right, right? it's just that you prefer this guy or that guy right okay so, so making so we, sure that you always find if you're looking for a stable guy you always find a stable guy right right uh -huh. so so what the Gripla product does is that internally it tries to identify based on the history based on the preference of the people uh, what are the other factors which will play important role in getting the person on board, right? But you say this is an art and not a science, right? mm -hmm. And the way you've been describing it, it's a lot of it seems to be intuition and getting the feel for the person on. Mm -hmm. So how do you package all of that into a technology? How can a technology tell you this person has got this character? Mm -hmm. Right, I think it's a super complex problem. Mm -hmm. It's not something which I can confidently say that we have cracked as of now. Okay. It's something which we have identified that is a problem which we have to do. Yeah. Uh, of course, at a very high level, it would mean that you have to analyze the requirements uh, at a much deeper level rather than just the bullet points. Okay. At the same time, you have to look at the profile, not just as a resume and whatever the person claims. Again, we also believe that most of the time what people are saying in the resume are not entirely true. It has to be verified. It has to be understood. Right. And only if you take those kind of garbage out, if you take that noise out of the profile, it will match with your requirements much better. Right. right? So this is this is the whole thing of uh, then identifying and analyzing what are the right elements mm -hmm. and then how can you better match those, right? Okay. Which will give you essentially the person you are looking for.
Okay, so now that that's a, seems like a very complicated process. It's good luck with you to figure that out. But taking back again to the same question of if you've got someone in house who mm-hmm. knows everyone, or he knows your leadership, knows your team, knows mm-hmm. your startup, knows the culture of the company. Why would you not trust that person to go out and find you the right person? Why is a full time job rather mm-hmm. than an outside company mm-hmm. using a tech product? Mm-hmm. And for you, for you, that's only. I mean, that for you, I mean, you've got multiple customers, right? True. So True. why trust you over someone who's dedicated and knows exactly what the company wants? Sure, sure. I think uh, to answer this question, maybe uh, we also need to understand how the the whole paradigm is changing. If you see mm-hmm. in terms of the hiring. Right. Right. There were times when people were entirely doing it through their own internal recruitment team okay. and if they have to hire, you will hire more recruitment uh, yeah. members. right? But at the same time, the way things are changing is that from the employee front, mm-hmm. HR also has a lot of other responsibilities to play. Right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of focus is going into that direction, right. which gives less bandwidth to do the hiring internally. Yeah. The second thing is that you also see the channels mm-hmm. the, uh, through which you can actually get the pool of people coming in right that also is expanding exponentially if you see you know, there are different ways it's not just limited to certain job boards mm-hmm. which was the case earlier but now there are all social media there is a uh, of course the job boards there are all uh, platforms like exactly. there's so many you know, options right? there are so many options right and and then if you have to kind of get people from all these boards right mm-hmm. your internal recruitment team might just burn out right okay. so why don't you so, you know, why not kind of uh, leverage the people who are not just working on one specific assignment, mm-hmm. but they already have a pool and they are working on so many different assignments. Okay, so right. you're saying so you, your aggregation is what makes you powerful. Right. Ball, so so that aggregation, so. because you have done that before, you've done it for someone else, mm-hmm. right, gives you that access to uh, that kind of Okay, so uh, you met one guy, he wasn't good for company A, but you meet company B and he exactly. the profile process. Exactly. Okay. exactly. And that's... One of the things which we also have in our platform that mm. we don't call people as rejected, we call them on hold. Okay? Because we feel that you know the profile is awesome. Uh, it's just that it's it not matching it's not some of the positions same. which uh, you know oh, we are looking really. at right now, but there is a position which will come later. Right. So these people that you hire, forget the companies, the people that come on board, are these people from other companies that you poach or is it or you know mm. main company poachers? Or are these all unemployed people or how does it work? No, it's uh, not uh, entirely any specific uh, segment as such mm-hmm. it's uh, more to do with you know whoever is completely in lookout mm-hmm. but we have also seen that um, uh, you know there are different challenges right mm-hmm. you know most of the time in the Indian context for example if you see uh, one of the studies said that 87 percent of people in India mm-hmm. are looking out not actively but there are yeah, yeah, okay. right so if you see most of the people either are actively looking out or they are passive we actually combine both. Mm. We focus more on the passive ones. The reason is that um, those are the people who are genuine to uh, the company that they are working in. It's just that we need to probably uh, present the right <laughs> right opportunity and then see if they are excited, okay. right, and then they will move on. Okay, so these people on your platform, they don't come to you. You go to them and say, "I have right, a job." Right. So at this point of time, this is uh, what we are doing. We uh, again. We'll source them from different channels. We have our own different uh, channels of sourcing. Okay. And then we will approach those people to figure out. So all of this theoretically sounds great. I mean, mm-hmm. the right people, the right direction, right culture. But if you're a startup just starting up, mm-hmm. you know, you've got one or two people on board, you're bootstrapped, you've got mm-hmm. an idea going, and you just need someone, so you've got a tech startup. Right? So mm-hmm. You've got an idea, but you need someone to come on board and just do the, you know, be a CTO, mm-hmm. run the tech side of it. Mm-hmm. Now, wouldn't it just be easy to say, go on to LinkedIn, find the guy who's hardworking, who's held a couple of important positions in startups before, who has some kind of experience, and just bring him on board rather than come to you and say, okay, I need this, I need that? True. How I think, important is that yeah, to you? Sure. I think uh, maybe the way we have to look at it is that uh, in the ideal world, if all mm-hmm. these platforms, whatever we have, mm-hmm. were giving exactly what we were looking for, I think the problem would have been solved. Okay. Oh, okay. But most of the time, there is a lot of internal assumptions, there are a lot of internal uh, logics which are there and because of which you really don't get the kind of people you are looking for. Okay. All these uh, channels will give you a pool, but you have to run your own sanity checks on that. You still have to oh, figure out what needs to be done. Now this is where different companies and the, uh, the products would add their own different values. The way we are adding the values, 
is that we are saying that the, the people who are coming from our talent pool are highly vetted already. They have gone through our pre-screening, our uh, assessments and whatever we have done on our end. They are having the verified details and that's what we work on. So you get additional value. You just don't get the profiles in the resume downloaded, but you have pretty much all the details verified as well. Okay. So, okay, so that's interesting. So it's not that you're competing with LinkedIn or LinkedIn. They said, yeah, LinkedIn is providing a pool, but it's all, you know, I can go on there and say, I am the CEO. Of right, right. There's no one vetting that. Mm -hmm. And then there's the employers on top who go, yeah, I need this, I need that, I need this. So you just come in between and you go, okay, we've right. got a pool, we've got an employer, we'll right. find out what works or which. Exactly, exactly. All right. So how do you do this? Like, what, how do you do it? I mean, it's a tough thing to do, obviously. Yeah, sure. So. See, I, I feel that, uh, uh, again, if you see, uh, eventually, this is uh, a very typical data science, mm -hmm. uh, machine learning kind of a problem where your system learns, you know, the, the best way to understand the requirements and the, the profiles and right. then understanding, you know, what should be the best way to find out the matches. I would say that the way we have started, we have uh, at least learned certain basics of uh, the key elements mm. and figuring out you know how those should be used right right as, and as, as, as we progress I mean that's that's how uh, things will keep evolving and then we will also uh, get there. okay so you're still in, like the beta phase of your company still yes. testing yes. everything trying to get everything right yes okay and you how long do you have timeline for yourself or is it all open and you no I think at this point of time we have enough excitement mm. uh, uh, we don't have the timelines as such in terms of the product. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, if you see the last uh, six months or last one year has been tremendous uh, success for us. And mm -hmm. you see in terms of the number of profiles which we have got vetted right. out has grown by 10x. Uh, if you see the number of customers, those have uh, grown uh, tremendously. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we will need to continue that momentum. I have no doubt about it. But the timeline in terms of the product will determine, will be determined by you know how soon uh, we are able to fix uh, those kind of problems which uh, you know make uh, which will make the whole decisioning process much more efficient right, right? this is the this is the part of the beta uh, beta stage where you want to make sure that your product uh, goes through the cycle of testing mm -hmm. um, and all the end users we already have few people in the invited mode who are using it already mm -hmm. They give us the positive feedback that it's working for them. Mm -hmm. We are able to solve the problem which we are claiming, right? And industry starts getting benefit out of it. Then we will uh, definitely start exposing it to the other companies as well. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Fascinating discussion. Okay. Thank and you very much. Thanks. Thanks for.